Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about passing the cottage on to your kids or to the next generation. And the topic we're going through today, this data or this information can be applied to other assets as well. It's not just a cottage, but we do find that a lot of people have cottages up in the Muskoka zone in Ontario, uh, in the shoe shop in BC or elsewhere. So if you have a secondary property or an asset that you're looking to pass to the next generation, we're going to go through four ways that you can do that. Before we jump into the content, I just wanna say we have two announcements plus a giveaway that I quickly wanna go through before we jump into the content here. So uh, announcement number one, we are launching next month in June, uh, Simple Plans Membership. What is Simple Plans Membership? It is a deep dive into one topic every single month around financial retirement, estate and tax planning. And so for the month of June, we're jumping into estate planning. What is estate planning? How does it work? What are next steps? What are kind of the tips and tricks? How to structure beneficiaries? Everything that you need to know about estate planning will be covered. So it's basically, it's, it's a monthly membership course. You will get emailed or access to the course content. It's a bunch of information, videos, contents, downloads, as well as a worksheet. So every month there'll be a worksheet. Part of it is kind of like a quiz almost where you can actually, you know, make sure that you learn as you go through the course. Second part of it, more importantly, is next steps. So stuff that you can work on to accomplish, you know, a proper estate plan, what you need to do to make sure you get everything in order. So that's number one. Links below with a bunch more information on that. The second one is our masterclass. We've had our masterclass around for about a year now. Uh, we haven't, again, really pushed it on the channel at all and we won't too much going forward, but we do have a masterclass. It's over 100 videos, content, again, about all things financial planning, retirement, state, buying homes, mortgages, everything. Um, so there's a lot of content in there, and it's a course you get access to all 100 videos, content, download all at one time. Uh, a little different than the membership. The membership is more of a, a deep dive into one topic over a month and really get you know, zoned in on that. Whereas the, the uh, masterclass is more of a overall holistic, you know, a bit of everything. Um, and it's a DIY, both of them are accessible, the information on your phone, tablet, computer. Uh, we have an app so you can get everything, you know, kind of wherever you want to learn, how you want to learn at your pace. So both are great options. They actually work really well together. Again, link below for the masterclass. You can find out more about that. Thirdly, we have a giveaway. So we've uh, partnered with Willful.co, Willful.co, and they do a wonderful job putting Will's power of attorneys together for Canadians. So um, we are giving away three of their premium packages. This is valued at $149 per Will package. So make sure there's a link below, put your name and email address in. We're going to do the draw next week. So next week, Wednesday, we will be doing the draw. So just under a week from now. So make sure you click the link, put your name and email address in there, and you'll be entered in for the draw for one of the three premium will packages. This gives you your will, your power of attorney, your living will, register of your will, and lifetime update. So uh, if you haven't heard of willful.co, make sure you go check them out. Uh, they have a bunch of different will package options, individual, premium, and family packages. You can go through that, see what the best fit is for you, but we are giving away three. So make sure you sign up uh, for that draw below and uh, hopefully you win. So we'll do the draw next week uh, on our Wednesday video. And I'll quickly add in, we are doing a $100 off our master course or master class right now. So use member 100 to get $100 off of our master class. Okay, so on to the topic. So how do we pass cottage, rental property, whatever it is, something that you, an asset that you wanna pass on to your kids, grandkids, next generation, whoever it is. There's really four key ways to do that. And some are more efficient than others. And there's no right or wrong way to do this, okay? We've seen it done all four different ways. It depends on your family dynamic, the situation, maybe how many kids or grandkids you have. If you have four kids, it's hard to pass that to all four. Uh, that may not work too well. It's also hard to pass it to one. Where's the equalization? So we're gonna go through those four ways. And just remember, there's no right or wrong way here. There's just, there's different ways to do it. So figure out what's the best for your situation and then take the steps necessary to implement that plan. So option number one is to actually pass on the cottage before you pass away. Um, so that might be now, right? You might be 80 years old, your kids are 60, grandkids are 40, and they wanna enjoy those, uh, you know, the cottage uh, for themselves. So you could technically pass it on, let's say you have two children and you wanna pass it so they own it 50-50. You could do that, 
you know, transfer ownership. Now there's a couple downsides to that. A, first off, you're gonna have to pay the tax bill now. So if this is your plan, you need to have some cash to pay that tax bill, okay? So that's kind of drawback number one. Drawback number two is that if you pass it to your kids, you now don't own it anymore. You've lost control of that. You're passing that on to the next generation. So those are the two downfalls of it. You know, the upside is that you've been able to hopefully, you know, build up this cottage asset, whatever it is. Now you've been able to see while you're alive, get it passed on to your kids, grandkids. So that's a huge benefit to be able to see that passed on through generations uh, and, and just allow, you know, watch them enjoy it, watch them, you know, take pleasure in what you've kind of built up over time. So if you can afford the tax bill, you know, and your kids get along and you don't mind, you know, passing on that control, that's a great way to do it. The second way to pass on your cottage uh, to the next generation or, or further would be to gift it in your will. And this is probably the most common way to do it because it gives you control of the asset until the day you pass away, which most people want and prefer. Um, it also leaves the tax bill to your estate. And oftentimes it's much easier to pay a tax bill when you're not alive and you know you don't need any future money. Uh, so it could be other assets, other cash that pay that tax bill to pass it on to the next generation. Now, again, what's the downside? What's the risk? Well, if you're gonna pass you know, the cottage to the next generation and there's a tax bill, it could be quite substantial. If you bought you know, a cottage in the Muskokas 30, 40 years ago, it's probably increased in price substantially, okay? So there's a capital gain to be paid. Is there money in the estate to pay that? And if there's not, your family or your beneficiaries might have to actually sell the cottage to pay the tax bill. So if you go this route, just make sure that there's actually money in your estate to pay the, the amount of taxes due, um, or else it's really a pointless plan. So just make sure that if you're passing it in the will, realize how much you know taxes your estate is gonna have to pay, not just on that, but everything as a whole, and make sure there's enough cash to pay those taxes so that that cottage continue to be owned as you had you know planned out in the first place through the will. The third way to pass on the cottage, and this is my favorite way, is to use life insurance. And a lot of people hear the word life insurance and they cringe and don't, don't want to hear it and it's a waste of money and whatever. But through a proper plan and through you know proper tax planning, buying life insurance to pay the, ins the, the tax a bill when passing on a cottage or any type of asset is actually a great tool to use. So if you can buy life insurance now, so let's say you want to control your cottage now, but you want to pass it to your kids or grandkids when you pass away, but there either may not be enough money in your estate to pay the tax bill, or you're concerned that, you know, the kids would rather have the cash, they're going to sell the cottage and that. You just want to make sure that it's very easy for the kids or grandkids to take over the cottage. If you can afford the monthly premium, and again, the monthly premium is going to depend on how much insurance you need, how old you are, what kind of health you're in. But let's say it's, you know, two, three, $400 a month of insurance um, costs. Well, you know, say the benefits half a million or a million dollars in proceeds. So it just allows you to kind of go back to number two where you pass it in your will, but the life insurance kind of gives you money that your estate will need to pay the actual tax bill. So, you know, if you're looking to pass a cottage or any other asset within your, you know, at death in your will, look to use life insurance because it can be a great and actually a cheap tool to use to pay the tax bill to keep the asset continuing in you know the next generation and more to come okay so option number four to pass the cottage on to the next generation would be to actually not pass it on to just sell it take the cash you know pass the cash on to the next generation and let them do with it what they want and this is actually you know we see this more often than not now. Uh, if you have, you know, three, four kids, maybe there's more kids, kids don't get along, whatever it may be, maybe kids live elsewhere and just, you know, giving them a cottage in Ontario when they live down in the States just doesn't make too much sense. So there's a lot of reasons to potentially sell it before. Um, again, you know, it gets rid of that tax bill, it just cleans up, it gives you cash. That may be the best option. And we're seeing it more and more, especially as uh, properties have increased in price. You know, to pass that on, the tax bill for many is just too much. It's easier just to sell it, take the cash, pass the cash on, and then the kids can do or grandkids can do with it what they want. So um, that would be the fourth way to do it. So again, to summarize, pass on before death. The second one is gifted in your will. The third one is to use life insurance. And that's kind of 
in combination with number two. So if you're going to gift it in your will, you need to make sure that your estate can actually afford the tax bill. And you might need to buy some life insurance to do that, or it might make sense to buy life insurance to pay pennies on the dollars for that tax bill as well. And then the fourth one is just to sell it, not pass it on, pass on the cash, not the actual asset. So those are four ways that you can kind of transition cottages or the, the asset of the cottage um, to the next generation or to your grandkids or to charities for that matter. So um, hopefully you found yourself in one of these, you know, if you have kids that get along, you wanna pass it on, it's a great way to do it, but just make sure you plan accordingly. And remember, there's always going to be a tax bill to pay when you pass it on. Um, you might read online, there's, you know, little ways to get around it. Trust me, the CRA, they're gonna come after their tax bill. So make sure that you plan accordingly. So thanks again for joining us in this video. Again, uh, links to our membership, our masterclass and for the draw for three uh, premium wills from willful.co. So make sure you check those links out below. Thanks again for joining us in this video. I really do help it, hope it helped you. If you own a cottage, you know, other asset outside your principal residence that you're looking to pass on to the next generation or grandkids or whoever it is. Uh, hopefully these four tips helped you into setting up what your plan looks like. Again, no one, you know, not everyone's the same. Your plan is going to look a little different than the next person. So figure out what's right for you, your situation, and then start implementing that plan. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next video.